paint thinner and cleaning your brushes? That is the topic for today. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about paint thinner because some of my students get very confused on what kind of paint thinner to bring into the class. Back in the day when I started painting, the only thinner we had was turpentine. It's a very heavy pine smell, very toxic. It would fill the room with an extreme dense pungent smell and then odorless mineral spirits came out and it was a big major difference for artists. Professional artists went to it right away. It made painting in a room with other artists much more pleasant. We didn't have the smell. People weren't getting dizzy. We didn't have to leave the windows open in the wintertime. We could stay warm. This was a very big win. The traditional turpentine was very bad on your natural hair brushes. And that's all the different types of brushes we had back then were natural hair brushes. And so they made the bristles break down a lot quicker. Uh, turpentine was very toxic and it smelled, but when odorless mineral spirits came out, it was actually better for your brushes. And the toxicity dropped dramatically and the smell almost disappeared completely. Now, many years later, we have choices. We have something called turpenoid and a lot of artists like using that. Uh, and then we have the odorless mineral spirits that many professional artists still love using. And then we have something called green odorless mineral spirits. It's supposed to be more earth friendly and I'll talk about that and why that is. I like using the odorless mineral spirits and you can either pick it up at the art store or you can go to some place like your home store. And here is a can of uh, odorless mineral spirits that I picked up from Home Depot. They also have a version of this at Lowe's and other places. They'll either call it odorless or low odor, but it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, let's see, I think I picked up this can for $13. The price of mineral spirits will rise and lower depending on petroleum prices because it's a petroleum product. But if you go to the art store, you'll pay about the same amount of money for one fourth the amount of paint thinner. So if you want to save money, go to Home Depot. Many years ago, and you can see the company who makes these on the back, uh, I gave a call to one of these companies and I asked them that question. I said, what's the difference between what I get at Home Depot and what I get at the art store? And they said, it's very, very little difference, but you're going to have to pay a lot more for it. The mineral spirits that you get at the art store will evaporate just a little bit quicker and leave just a little bit less residue behind. Now already, odorless mineral spirits leaves hardly no residue behind anyway, and so it's not much of a difference. So there might be a painting style out there that you might want your thinner to evaporate just slightly quicker, uh, but for most professional artists, they just go down to Home Depot and get this stuff, and it works great, saves you a lot of money. Let's talk about the turpenoid and let's talk about the more green odorless paint thinner and they, it goes by different names and they're very similar in their content. And so they use a odorless mineral spirit base, but they also put citrus oils mixed in with them. Citrus oils break down oils really good. There's products like Goo Gone and your paintbrush cleaners will have a lot of citrus oil in it. And if you're into working with furniture and stripping down finishes and stuff, uh, there used to be this heavy toxic uh, chemical called strippies that would strip this down. You can now use citrus oils, which are non-toxic, and it really strips off old paint really well. So they put a mixture of those two together. The problem with these are uh, it has a lot of material in it that doesn't evaporate away and it leaves your brushes very sticky and gooey. So over time, you'll feel your brushes are sticky. They don't snap the way they should. They don't perform the way they should. Another problem is citrus oils are pretty new to artists and we don't know what they're gonna do long term in your painting. Uh, a lot of times I'll take a little paint thinner and I'll mix it with my paints to thin it out a little bit. 
if I have a substance in there like the uh, citrus oils that are extremely good at breaking down oils and I start painting on my painting, I don't know what it's going to do to my painting 20, 30, 40 years down the road. We just don't know yet. So I'm staying away from it for those two reasons. Now I know people swear by them and that's fine if you want to use it. But if you want to use something that's very cheap and very practical and very safe, I would stick with the odorless mineral spirits. Okay, I am now going to show you how to clean a brush. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, some of the videos that are online that aren't quite true. <laughs> we, we make assumptions because something looks like something happened and we assume. So for instance, uh, here's a jar of paint thinner and all of my paint particles have dropped to the bottom. Then you have this pure clean thinner above and then you can carefully pour that thinner into another jar and it's like brand new thinner all over again and you don't have to throw it away. And this would be wrong because there's two parts to oil paints. There's pigment and medium. The pigment settles to the bottom of the jar. The medium, which would be linseed oil, stays suspended in the mineral spirits. There's no way to separate that unless you have a centrifuge. It's the pigments that make your brush a little dirty but it's the linseed oil that destroys your brush. It makes it very rigid, stiff. It makes the hairs break off. So it's, it would be considered the worst part of old thinner. And there's no way to separate that. How do I dispose of this thinner? I have a big five gallon jug. Uh, I dump my old thinner in there. I shake it up really good and I dump it in there. And in our city, we have a hazardous waste disposal place. And it's free for people like me to use since I live in the area. And I take that old thinner up there and they dispose of it. And then they give me my jug back so I can refill it again. Uh, it's not too much of a hassle because it takes a long time to fill up that five gallon jug. And so I go up there maybe once every three years. So once every three years is not too bad to dispose of your thinner the right way. Now I'm going to talk to you about cleaning out your brush. Grab some color on here. Let's grab some gray. Put it in there. Now, if you're new to painting, new to painting with oils, uh, you're probably defaulting on what you see on TV or in movies. And you'll see a lot of brushes just in the jar like that, just sitting there. And this is what you don't want to do. This is probably what acrylic people will do because acrylic dries so quick and they don't want their brushes to seize up. And so if they don't want to take the time to clean out that brush, they got to throw it in the water really quick but oils don't dry that quick. It's gonna take days for that brush to dry. And what happens by leaving it in a jar like that, the tips of your brush will start to curl over time and then you're painting with a brush that has a hook on it and it's very difficult to paint with those. And I have students that have brushes like that because they keep doing this and they shouldn't be doing that. So how do we clean it? You don't want to touch the bottom of the uh, jar with your brush. I'm holding it side by side. You may not be able to see it when I put it in there. I want to push it up against the side of the jar, just under the thinner line, and I'll push it up against the side of the jar, and then I want to twist it. And if I twist it like that, the bristles will actually start self-cleaning themselves. And it's the safest, best way that I know how to clean a brush and it's also the fastest way that I know how to clean a brush. So I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to hold down my jar and I'm going to twist. Twisting pretty fast. And I'm just rotating the brush around a little bit and then I'm going to wipe. Take a paper towel right here. I'm going to wipe. If I see any streaks at all, then I know I need to clean it more. And so I see some streaks. So I'm going to clean it a little bit more. Okay, wipe. There we go. If I only see the dirtiness of the thinner, then it's clean. But if I see any type of streaking in there at all, that means it's dirty. And this brush is clean. Okay, I hope these tips on paint thinner and how to clean your brush helps. And happy painting. There, I said it. Happy painting. Okay, cut.